Welcome back to Green Thumb Gardening Secrets. Today we're going to talk about reasons to grow cover crops, specifically how they significantly aid in suppressing weeds, diseases, and pests, while at the same time boost both our production and our pocketbooks. Can't wait to get started. Let's get going. First, let's talk about what. Cover crops, as you see here, are crops like these thick stands of oats, forage radishes with super deep tap roots, this winter wheat that grew up after the forage radishes died back over the winter, beautiful cereal rye, which is also called winter rye, beginner friendly annual ryegrass, crimson clover and other clovers that are shorter term legumes, perennial legumes like alfalfa with their massive tap roots, and many others that. Just like the name implies, cover the soil. They blanket the soil, to, they protect the soil. When the soil would otherwise be bare in areas of the garden where there aren't food crops or between widely spaced food crops. They're also in an acknowledgement that we can do better and there are, there's a better option than leaving our soil bare for six to nine months of the year. But why grow them? There are at least 20 reasons to grow cover crops. But today we're gonna to talk about in more detail about four reasons, two that involve weeds, diseases, and pests, and two that involve yields and costs. Cover crops, because they capture so many nutrients, because they build nutrients, because they pull nutrients up from deeper in the soil, they boost our yields. They keep nutrients in the soil at exactly the way our plants want them and in an area that the plant's roots can get, which drastically boosts our yields. And it does so much cheaper than using fertilizer or having to use more fertilizer. You can seed in an entire garden for a few dollars. It's embarrassing. I go to my local garden shop to get cover crops and I always have to keep cash on me because I walk up and it's, it's, it costs me a dollar to get what I'll use for that day. And I feel bad buying only a dollar's worth of stuff there and definitely using credit card, right? So they provide all those benefits, but they're really cheap to provide those benefits. Our next two reasons have to do with weeds, diseases, and pests. If you think about what we had growing in any spot in this garden before this and what we'll have growing after, as long as this cover crop is from a different plant family, it doesn't have the same diseases and pests. So say we had squash growing here and we pulled the squash off in the fall when we planted a cover crop. As long as the cover crop is not from the squash family, it's not a cucurbit, it doesn't have the same diseases and pests. And so it breaks those disease and pest cycles. The disease doesn't have anything to live on. Those diseases live on cucubits, they don't live on grasses. And the pests live on cucubits, they don't live on grasses in general. So having a cover crop in between garden plants can break disease and pest cycles. You can see this a lot of times in action. If you are say harvesting broccoli and you see there's some cabbage worms on them and then you plant annual rye after. The, car, the broccoli goes in the compost bin and the, the annual rye goes in here. The cabbage worms, they're not gonna live on winter rye. It's the same thing with cucurbits. You know, a lot of times we'll see, we do a pretty good job of keeping everything bug free, but you see a few cucumber beetles and squash bugs fleeing as we're clearing the garden of the cucurbits before we put on a cover crop. Those squash bugs and those cucumber beetles can't live on, on winter rye, can't live on forage radishes, can't live on, on alfalfa, can't live on, the list could go on. So it breaks their cycle. They can also really vastly prevent and discourage weeds. Have a look through this bed over here. We came through earlier and I walked through, I found one weed and this is bare, but here we go, here are a couple. Here are a couple little weeds, they're not even bad. They're actually little legumes that we wouldn't mind in here anyway, especially when at this stage. And this is bad in comparison to what I'll show you in a second because this is bare in comparison to that for reasons I'll explain in another video. But we have very few weeds. If we come over to this bed, which has a living cover crop, you can see, you just pan the camera through. We have basically no weeds. Oh yeah, here we go, here's one. <laughs> and this is a good example here in this tiny little spot. One of the things that's amazing about weeds, why they're so successful in our garden, one of their major adaptive qualities is dormancy in their seeds. Their seeds have an ability to stay dormant until just the perfect time for them to have the best chance of survival. If you think about it, if our weed seeds germinated at any time of the year, we'd quickly exhaust the seed bank but they don't. They know exactly the right temperature, 
uh, soil moisture, uh, amount of sunlight. Uh, for, and every, for every seed, it's different. It's, and what cover crops do is they shade the soil they, because they keep the soil shaded, cooler, and more full of, of moisture. Most seeds don't germinate. They just don't think it's the right time for them. They can tell that they don't have an open enough place to germinate. And those that do end up so stunted that this is, this is what the weed that you have. The cover crop is so dense, it just outcompetes the weed. And to be honest, a couple of those were Dutch clover that I would have just left on there because it's, it's actually doing some good. It's not doing any harm. It's another cover crop that we've brought in here. So it's not really a weed even. Well, that's it for this episode, but there are at least 16 other reasons that are all just as important for our gardens and farms. So check out our previous episodes for more details on cover crops effects on nutrients and air and water. And stay tuned for upcoming episodes on how cover crops positively impact health and peace of mind and the compelling premise that underlies each of these reasons and the decision to use them. And until next time, stay open to growing. You can find more on this topic and others on my website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Like this video if you liked it. Likes really help us out. Leave a comment or question below. I personally answer each one and subscribe to get all of our future videos. And if social media is your jam, feel free to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more green thumb gardening secrets, tricks, and tips. Just the tips. They have almost, or they have really no insect damage. Maybe you put nothing on them. No, oh, Monarch. That's cool. You come through?